Well, welcome to part two of fixing a hand cane seat. And this is the tool that I will tell you about in the video. And thanks to YouTube not allowing me to post this as one long video, you guys get to see what this tool looks like, although I don't actually demonstrate it in the video. Okay, let's get into it now, shall we? Hey, <laughs> hopefully you can see me. Um, and what I'm really wanting you to look at is the cane material. So this has been soaking and you can see it's nice and flexible. It's not going to crack. When you get ready to start doing the weaving where we are now, where we're going to start doing the fourth step, you're going to want to check as you start the weaving, which way the cane is going, not just the underside and the slick upper side, but also you're wanting to look at the little joints that are in the cane material. I'm just running over. Okay, so here's one right here. If I push my thumb against it this way, it catches. But if I'm going this way, it's smooth. So if it's threading through and the weaving is going this way, this is the way I want to put it through. Because if I put it through this way, every time I pass under or over one of the strands that's already in place, this little notch right here will catch on it. So hold on for a moment. I'm going to set the chair up and uh, we'll get started again. How lovely the sun <laughs> is shining right here for the moment. We've had so much rain, oh my gosh. So this strand that I'm weaving is always in front of the ones, like I said um, earlier, and it is going over these strands where the other strand went under, and it's going under where the other strands went over. So we're creating, um, it's basically, we're, we're weaving, we're creating a little weaving, an oh, just simple over and under pattern. I do a couple of um, passes, and then I pull the cane through, and then I back up so that I'm making sure when I'm doing that, that this is not twisting over, because you do not, it, you can correct it easily, but it's just more time consuming. So the passing it through, my hands, before I start the weaving again, make sure that the cane material is not twisted. And the other thing I would like to mention is that when you're adding a new piece, if possible, add it where there is already a peg holding a piece, and that way you have less loose ends scattered all about the perimeter of the chair and they'll be concentrated in certain areas. And it's okay to remove pegs if they're uh, going to be a little bit in the way as you're coming across and then just put them back in once you complete that portion of the weaving. 
Now here's where this all comes in handy because I can slip it underneath the strand, slide the cane material in, and then get it to run up over top. So during this early stage of weaving, it's important to keep pushing the, the ones that you first put in, the warp basically, make sure that those strands are staying together. And then as you are weaving across, also keep those strands together. And then you'll see this, this little grid is beginning to form. Now I've been keeping my nails short because I've been making ferments <laughs> and I'm wanting my nails to be really clean if I have my hands in the sauerkraut mix. Um, however, if you're just doing caning and you can let your nails get a little bit longer, they will actually become a good tool to help you lift the cane material up and also for this thing that I'm doing right here, which is just pushing the strands together. And you can use your thumbnail or, or however. Um, believe it or not, they actually make a tool for this. I'll show you that a little bit later. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to bring you close in so you could see. These are just little things I'm now just doing intuitively or automatically because I've done this for so many years. These are little things as I think of them, I'm gonna tell y'all. Put it down, pass it back through. It's like sewing, <laughs> just going through the little holes on the side. Again, if I need to, I've got the awl. I can lift the strand up and slide this under and then just get it to slide up over top of the next strand. The nice music in the background um, is uh, courtesy of my friend Marika. She was playing this for Donna and I whilst we were making salsa. <laughs> and I asked her um, what it was and so she um, said, oh, it's on YouTube. So I'll post a link to this music um, for y'all in case, in case you're enjoying it. and. Um, Marius, it's nice to fall asleep to <laughs> in case in case this video puts you to sleep like my other video did, although I know you said it was because you were tired, not because it was boring. When I'm working this, I have one hand on the top side and one hand underneath, and that saves a lot of time because otherwise I would be reaching my one hand up and down continuously. By working with both hands, one on the top of the chair seat and one on the bottom, um, you're just passing the cane through the seat, and that's that makes it a little easier. And then again, I'm just tightening the closeness um, of the strands. Every so often I do that. And that, later on, it you could do this at the very end after this fourth step was completely woven across the seat. But by doing it every so often, whilst you're doing the weaving, it's just going to save you time um, later on. And it makes it really easy to see where you are, and again, remembering that you are always keeping it in front of the first horizontal. Believe it or not, that plays a huge role when we start doing the weaving that goes across the chair diagonally. Again, a little all, every place that the uh, the weaving is up against the wood, it's tight, and having an awl will really make your life easy, or easier.
when I first uh, started weaving today, I did wet this, this cane material that was already in the seat. Um, and it's important to, to do that every so often because this, once it tightens up, it, it does make it easier to do it if it's wet. Once it tightens up, it, it's harder to, to do the weaving. So I'm going to pause here for just a moment so I can get some water on my hands and uh, re-wet this. Okay, I've got only six more rows to weave the step four horizontals across listening to some lovely Appalachian style music courtesy of Bruce Green and Don Petty who put a YouTube concert up in hopes to benefit the Troublesome Creek Stringed Instrument Company in Kentucky that was severely damaged during the floods. I'll put a link to the YouTube concert that I'm listening to uh, along with a link to their GoFundMe page below this in case anyone is interested in um, sending some help uh, that way. It's a pretty cool instrument company. So I'm just gonna re-wet this a little bit with a spray bottle. That's all you need to do. Alternately, you could lay a, a wet uh, like a washcloth or something over top of this to let it rehydrate.
Well, I'm gonna pause this right here. Hold on just a second.
pause the music for just a moment. Okay, so I'm going to bring you a little closer so that you can actually see the, the way the weaving is going. So remember early on I said to keep your, your grid, you know, get your verticals and your horizontals um, tightened up. Each pair that's going across the seat gets tightened up. So as I'm weaving this, I am going over the horizontals and under the verticals. One quick way to remember this that Alice taught me is when you are going from the right-hand corner to the left-hand corner, you go over the horizon, over the horizon and behind the trees. And then if you were to attempt to weave it in the other direction, and I'll just, um, I'll just show you what happens. If I were to try to go under, I'm not sure if I can hold this with my knee. Let's see. Maybe, maybe not. No, I'm gonna put you back up here. Hold on. If I try to go under the horizontals and over the verticals in this direction, it will it will do that. Can you see how that is like it's jammed. It's not wanting to go. It flows. It flows over the horizontals and behind the verticals in this direction. And this is what I was saying about the importance of making sure when you're weaving that step number four that you are in front of the first horizontal. And that's what creates the tension or lack of tension and allows these diagonal pieces to be woven in. So I'm going to go ahead and keep going on this. If you're working on a chair, you go on with what you're doing and I'll come back to y'all in um, just a few minutes. Okay, if you've been following along with your piece of furniture, hopefully it's going to look something like this. You can see the pattern where the First diagonals are being woven in behind the verticals and over top of the horizontals. Also, you'll notice that at the edges of the front and the back, you've got these little lines going this way. This becomes important because when we put in the second diagonal, they will lace over it this way and it will create a lovely little X pattern on the front and the back of the chair. Okay, so I'm going to just go ahead and spray the seat down and uh, we'll get started on going in the other direction. So this morning, um, you're probably noticing two things. One, that these little pegs are no longer on the chair and that is because there's enough material in the seat now to hold itself together. The, the pegs are no longer required in fact, at this point, they kind of get in the way, so you can just go ahead and take those out. I'm going to use the awl at this point, and I'm going to go around the seat and just, you know, I've sprayed the seat a couple of times to make sure the cane is, is damp. I'm going to go through each of the holes and just go around the chair to kind of push the cane material to one side of the hole. You may have noticed earlier in the video there were some places where it was a little slow for me to get the cane material up or down through the hole on the perimeter. And going around with the awl at this point in the weaving will make this next step and the step that comes after this a little bit easier. Although I will do this again before I do the final step of weaving on the seat. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish going around the chair with the awl, just pushing the cane material. And there are some holes that have more strands going into it, and obviously those are going to be extra tight. Also, on this chair, I have the situation of the front legs coming up very close to the perimeter of the seat where the cane is going through the holes and so in those locations I may have to flip the chair over and also use use this awl that I talked about which has that concave so when this is placed inside of one of the holes it 
it creates a, a cupped area so that a strand of cane can be pushed through even if it's super tight. Okay, so I'm gonna finish doing this. Um, if you're on this step with me, um, go ahead and do that. Now we'll begin the diagonal weaving from the bottom left towards the upper right corner of the seat. And so now we're gonna do the opposite. Instead of going over the horizon and behind the trees, we will go behind the horizon and in front of the trees, basically doing the reverse action of what we did going the other way. This is going to create the traditional cane pattern that you see on so many pieces of furniture. They also use it as a pattern, a printed pattern on material. You may have seen it on oh, curtains, shower curtains, uh, pillows, things like that. It's a, it's a traditional pattern. So I'm gonna keep my all handy because if I run into a tight spot as I get closer to the edge of the seat over there where the cane material actually lays on top of the wood, it can be tight to get the, the new strands through and that's where the awl will help me. It doesn't matter exactly where on the seat you begin the weaving, although generally try to start in the corner and aim for the opposite corner to make sure that you're going to get the right trajectories and the weaving will, the weaving will look correct. If it's not lined up properly and you're trying to weave, you're going to notice it right away. It's just not the strand is not going to want to pull through. Also, um, remember to continually check your cane to make sure that your the, the mat side or um, flat side is down and that the side that has the sheen to it, the bark side of the material, is facing up. It's sometimes easy to get the strand twisted as you're putting it through. Also, you'll notice um, for the most part, I work with one hand on the bottom of the seat and one on the top so that I can push the material through the seat and otherwise I would be reaching, continually reaching up, up and down. Um, when I'm going in the other direction, generally I'm pulling the strand through with my left hand. Now I'm going from the left to the right, so I'll be pulling the strand with my right hand, but you work whatever way is comfortable for you. I do this sitting down, but um, this can also be done if you had a low table set up or some some sort of a surface that was raised up, you could do this standing. Um, and depending on the piece, I sometimes do that. But for filming this one for y'all, it just seemed um, easy and comfortable to, to do this here in the kitchen sitting down. So just let me push that through there. And we're getting closer to where the edge is. And so now I'm not going to be able to use my hand to get underneath that. So this is where I will slip the material under using the awl to lift it. And then catch that little edge and pull it over. And that is the first, first strand going from the left corner to the right corner. Again, what I was talking about, even though I went around and loosened the holes with the material, having the awl to help feed it through is, is really good thing. Okay, so now I'm gonna find the other end of the strand and bring it up. And so when I'm doing um, the, first, the first weaving across when I add this new piece, Hopefully you'll remember that I said to be aware of which way the, the cane grew so that you have the, those, those little joints that you can feel. So that first strand I just ran through, I actually ran it through the other way, but I didn't run into any snags. But now the rest of this strand is really, really long and I want to have the material flowing this way across the joints and not getting snagged on these little parts. Also, you'll notice that I feed the cane material through my hands, keeping that shiny side up and the matte side down, and also confirming as I'm pulling it through that it's not twisted. Getting it twisted is really not fun. <laughs> so 
I'm one, I'm one hole over from where I was. However, as I move it across the chair, um, well, you'll just see here in a moment. It may or may not come out adjacent to the hole that I just went into on the other end. We'll see in a moment. And that sometimes happens. There are holes that get skipped and there are holes that get doubled. Um, and I'll bring you down a little bit closer to show you that. Every chair is different. I would recommend for your first piece of furniture, if possible, depending on where you're buying it from, if you can get a square seat or one, you know, which is sort of square, that that will be easier for a first time caning versus doing a, a completely round seat. Um, just personal observation of, you know, when I was learning, um, Alice uh, started me working on the square seats before she set me onto the furniture that was more like this with a, a slightly out of square shape or, or round seated chairs. Again, each time I pull the material through, I go ahead and feed it through my hands again, confirming that I have maintained the right side up and also that it's not twisted. And you'll see, as you're pulling the loop, um, you'll see that the shiny side is up. It's, it's fairly common to get you know, a twist in it, and that's why I recommend to, you know, just feed it through your hands each time you get ready to pull it through the weaving. You can also, if you're doing this sitting, sitting down and holding, um, holding the chair with your knees to um, lift it up a little bit in the front if you need to is fine. Um, Okay, so although I checked this piece of material, it has broken. So what that means, and I'm glad this happened because now I get to show you, <laughs> I'm going to have to back this piece out and then start the weaving again from that point. And that happens. Not all the, the strands are cut. Um, it's, it's a natural material, so there can be breakage and other things that can happen. So I'm going to back that out. You can also um, take clippers, cut it carefully so you don't injure the parts of the seat that are already woven. And then you can also use your awl to pull it back out. I won't cut this end up top here. I'll leave it un underneath. And whilst we're at it, let me just show you the underside of the chair so you can see all the ends of where the K material got started or ended, this is the, the very last thing that will happen is that these will get tied off. Right now, it's important to have them loose um, because to make the knots to tie them off. And also, if you knot them at this stage of the weaving, then it makes more uh, obstacle of, at the base under the chair where you'd be trying to stick the cane through and you'll end up running into a knot that's going to stop you. So leaving this crow's nest under the chair for the time being is not a problem. Okay, so let's get, let's get that piece of cane back up here. And, all right, let me look and see. Okay, yeah, so there was a split. Where that joint was, there was a split in the cane. So I'm going to go back just a little bit further, check the material to make sure there's no splits, and I'm going to cut it on this side of that joint. Okay, and then I will just begin again to put it through, and this does require patience. Um, if you have situations, you know, where the material breaks and whatever, um, if you start getting frustrated, you know, just set it aside. The nice thing about this particular seat weaving is that at, at the um, 
other seats, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you have to complete them all in one go. But this, this material, you can start and stop as long as you spray the seat material down. Um, it won't matter if you're, um, you know, set it aside for a few hours or a day or whatever your schedule and frustration level <laughs> it was requiring. So, here we go. Okay, I'm holding the chair again with my knees to just tip it up slightly and be able to slide the material through. And you can see how nice it's flowing. It's not getting snagged on any of the joints. Um, so that was a good, that was a good teaching moment. And to let you know that even if you've been doing this for a really long time, stuff like that happens. And um, yeah, it's perfectly fine. Easy to fix. Also, when purchasing the cane material, and I will have links below this video for um, the suppliers, if you, you know, you can order a slightly more expensive, longer strand premium cane uh, material, and I would suggest uh, doing that rather than the, the shorter bunches. I haven't noticed any sort of decline in uh, quality at this point. I mean, there's been supply chain issues on a lot of things in our in our world these days uh, because of the pandemic but the caning material at least at this point um, the, the quality and availability hasn't hasn't changed so hopefully uh, hopefully that will remain the case because this is a really um, it's a really great craft and I hope other people will begin to take this up it's nice to be able to go to a secondhand store and find an old piece of furniture and put it put it back to usefulness. Okay, so now I'm gonna once again slide it all the way through my hands. Oops, make sure that there's not a twist in it. Go all the way back, not a twist in the cane. Okay, and then again, I'm going to use this all to slide under there and get a hold of that little edge and slide it all the way through. Okay, and so this is where I was saying that the cane material may or may not end up in the same hole. I could put it through there, but getting under this part right here would be rather tight. Um, so I need to spray this area first to make sure that there's enough moisture in there for flexibility so that it doesn't break the cane. Alternately, I could just go down this hole, but it will look a little more finished if I go through that one. Again, I'm going to feed this cane material through my hands. I'm looking to make sure it's good. Turn the chair the other way. Slide the awl underneath here just to lift it a little bit to slide the point of the cane under and then pull it up so I can get a hold of it. There. I've been keeping my nails kind of short because I've been making um, sauerkraut and maybe you've seen <laughs> some of those videos but I did say at the beginning if you're working on chairs if you have a little bit of nail it helps you to get a hold of the cane when you're in a tight spot. Okay, so now I'm gonna feed that down this same hole that we went down through with the first one. And let's see, yep, it's gonna slide right in. Again, making sure there's no twist. And there we go. So I'm gonna just lift you up for a moment so I can show you what I was mentioning about some holes having the material double up and other times it not um, it not being that way. So on this on this part right here, we've got two strands going in. Um, similar was over here where two diagonals went in. Um, this one here at the back, same thing. Um, these over here, some of them are doubled up. So it's gonna just be the way it's naturally wanting to flow across the chair, but you will notice that it will it will sort of match up with two strands being in this hole here, going across, and one up is where two strands went in. So 
I'm going to keep going on this. You do too. I'll be back in a few minutes when we have more of the seat woven.
Julie Polis. Okay, so I'm continuing this, and I hope if you're working on your chair, you are coming closer to the last corner of the second diagonal. And the next thing that will happen is we will put the binder on. So keep going on your chair. I'm gonna keep going on this one. Okay, so we're ready to do the next step, which is put on the binder. So I just sprayed all around the perimeter of the seat. I've done it a few times. The seat itself does not need to get wet, just the edges. Taking the awl, going around the perimeter of the seat now, what's going to happen is, like we did earlier, pressing the cane material against one side of each of the holes, we're making space so that a, a new strand of cane can be used, kind of like sewing, up through and then back down over top of what will be the binder, which is a wider piece of cane. And I'll show you that in just a moment. If you're working your chair alongside of me, this is your next step to go around the perimeter of the chair. If you're looking down at the seat, you may be able to see light coming through the holes and that's really good. That means you're gonna have space to do the lacing of that final strand of cane holding the binder in place. So let me get that and I'll show you what's gonna happen. So over here in the sink, um, for the last couple hours, I've been soaking this wider piece of cane. This is the binder cane. I'll just go ahead and take that out and let some of the water drip off. Bring it over to the chair. So now I'm going to look at this piece of cane and look for any places that there's damage. So that's, that's a crack right there. So I would not want to use that part. So I'm going to go ahead and Put that right there to remove that. Just go around. You can see the larger joint. It's the same material as what we've been weaving with. It's just wider. And this is the material that I believe I told you about in another video is used for porch weave. This would be a fine porch weave. It does, the material actually comes wider than this. So again, just looking for anything that might be uh, damage. I cut this piece extra long because we want to make sure that we're going to have enough to go completely around the seat. Okay, here's another piece that's damaged and I believe that's going to be okay, but I'm going to measure it out on the seat in just a moment. And if that's the case, I will cut, I will cut it off where that crack is. All right, let's so bring the seat over. Let me get the whole thing in the frame. Hold on a second, let me set you up a slightly, slightly better view. Okay, so I wanna make sure that this, the length of this is sufficient to go completely around the chair. So I'm just gonna poke it down into one of the holes to hold that part in place. And then I'm just gonna go around and begin somewhat shaping it to the perimeter of the seat. And again, this is why I say uh, for somebody just starting out doing this, to do a square seat will be easier than doing a round seat or a seat shaped like this. Okay, coming around here. Bring it to measure out. And then, and obviously I will cut extra length. So now I'm gonna go back and see where was that crack? Okay, the crack is there. So I'll just cut it at that point. We'll have plenty of material to go completely around the seat. All right, so hold on now. Let's get the next part here. So one quick thing to point out, this is the, the width cane I used to weave the seat. This is a just a slightly narrower cane, which I'm gonna use to get the binder stitched into place. You can use the same diameter cane that you use to weave the seat, that's perfectly fine. If your chair has very tight holes based on you know what's already been woven through them and you wanna make it just slightly easier to get your stitching cane through, then I would say choose a, a more narrow cane to do this next part. This also needs to get soaked, so that's what's happening now. So I just tapered the edge of this so that it's gonna slide down into the hole a little bit easier. Now, 
If your chair is square, you're going to cut your binder into four lengths, one to go across the back, one the front, and obviously one on each side. Because this chair is, oh, it's not round, but it's got that shape to it, the binder's gonna go on in one piece. So, to line up a little bit better. So the first thing is, where do you start? Well, because this is a more of a round seat, the binder's going to start somewhere towards the center back of the chair. So I'm feeding this down through. I can feel it. It's come through the bottom of the wooden frame. And now I'm going to start sort of bending it a little bit as we're going to go around the first curve in this direction. This is with the weaving of the seat, this particular chair, you can stop and start. It's not a problem. You can, you know, lay a wet washcloth on it. You can spray it down. You can keep working. With the binder, the binder has now been soaked. It's flexible. We want to get this step done in one continuous uh, task. If it starts to dry out, obviously spray this down or take a cloth with water on it and wet it. You want this to remain flexible so that it does not crack. All right, I'm going to get now the piece of cane so we can begin putting the binder on. Now, when we first started weaving this chair, I told you about having your strands of cane being as long as possible. When we are doing the binder, it is okay to work with shorter lengths it actually will make your life a little less crazy if you work with shorter lengths of the binder um, lacing because the the longer it is, that's that much more material that you're pulling through the, the holes and lacing through. So having a slightly shorter length is going to make it easier. You'll just, you know, you'll tie it off when, when everything under the chair gets tied off. And I think I've got this term is blocking what I'm trying to show you, which is exactly not right. Okay, I may just bring you down there to, to show you. All right, so I, I poked the lacing cane down through the hole, came back up, looped it around that first spot. This, this one will stay just a little bit loose. Again, the importance of making sure you have the slick side up. Don't let anything twist. So I'm still feeding this whole piece of lacing through my hands as I'm working it through. It's occasionally what you may need to do is um, trim trim the, the edge and this also makes the lacing get shorter as you're working it but so you have a really sharp point to help feed through uh, the holes and then again if I get really really stuck um, I'll get the all, but okay, that, that seemed to be what it needed. Let's see. Yep. That's what it needed. Okay. So it's going through and as you're doing this, um, flipping the chair up sometimes to see what's actually going on underneath the seat is helpful. Um, so I'm going to pull that, pull where it came up. I'm going to pull that as tight as possible. And then pull this one down again, making sure that the shiny side is up and we're not getting any twist in it. You skip every other hole as the binder is put on. Best practice is to lace through every single hole. And that's why I say this is a time consuming um, Step number four, where we were weaving across the chair, and then this step number seven, putting the binder on. These, these are the two patient building <laughs> steps of this particular chair seat repair. So I'm just gonna keep going around. Again, if for some reason I felt like, oh, I can't find where the hole is coming through from underneath, I can stick the all in. So I can feel that underneath there and feel around so until I can find it. There's the hole. Or turn the chair around, even lift it up if necessary to find where's the space. And then if you're doing that sort of thing, make sure that you don't um, cane uh, 
the legs or something in by accidentally looping your lacing material around the, um, okay, so hopefully, then, where is it? Uh, oh gosh, I'm too close, hold on. Well, you can see that. See it? It's coming through. It went through that little part of the awl. Okay, let's set that back down. The awl is probably one of the most important tools. When I first uh, started caning with Alice, um, she did not have an awl like this. This particular awl, the man that has Mike's cane and rush in California, he found out about this tool when he went to purchase um, the cane material and he goes overseas and you know talks to the people who are growing this rattan plant and one of the uh, one of the sites where he was at they actually had that tool that they were using and he saw that and was like oh my gosh this is this is what hand caners around the world <laughs> have been looking for. And he bought one of the tools and then he started having them um, make those tools so he could sell them for, to help folks out. Okay, so this is, go this is basically what's going to happen. Even though I went through the holes with the round awl, I'm still needing to go use this flat convex awl in order to get the material to come up through. So. I'm gonna pause the camera for just a moment. I'll show you this in one second. The all on this one, I think. Yep. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> okay, it around. Again, checking underneath to make sure I'm not capturing any of those loose strands. Yeah, now I'm just kind of holding the, the chair. You can see my hand there. I'm just holding it off the ground against my knee. And Working this through, there we go, see that, okay. So I'm, I'm reaching, although, I mean, I've, we started with a shorter length, I've trimmed it, uh, trimmed the end a few times to keep it as pointy as possible to make it easier to slide through. Um, so this is probably going to be my last threading through, and then I'll start the next piece of lacing cane that I've got soaking. Make sure that you've always got one more piece soaking uh, when you pull one out for this part of the of the weaving process because you don't want to have to wait <laughs> for a piece of cane to be getting flexible. Um, but again, everything, you don't want stuff to be drying out. So you can see that. Okay, so I'm pulling that, pulling that through that way. And then I'm also tightening the previous one down, holding the, um, pressing the, the binder as flat as possible. And I'll show you another trick here in just a, just a moment. But we're wanting to make sure that the, the part that's pulling up is up all the way so that there's no loop there and then pulling down to flatten everything out. Whilst the materials are nice and pliable, so hopefully you can see the, this is a more rounded end. This one has more of a flat, flat end to it. I'm going to take my mallet and just gently tap the lacing down and the binder as well. This is, however, whatever position it's in, as it dries, that's how it's going to stay. And so it, it's important to get this tight and also as flat as possible. So this is just a little technique that Alice taught me, you know, as don't go, you know, don't go crazy with it, but you wanna kind of keep positioning that binder to be laying flat. And by tapping the lacing down um, and the binder as you're going, Again, if you were working with a square seat, this would not be an issue. You would just be going across a straight length and then another straight length. With these curves in here, we're shaping the material to the contours of the seat. So I've got my next strand of lacing cane starting here. 
through the hole. Make sure I'm not looping around a rung. Again, this is the first uh, loop, so it's going to be a little bit looser. It will get tightened up once uh, we come back to tie off all the crow's nest underneath the seat. This is one of the holes that has a larger amount of cane material from the seat weaving part of the project going through it, so might be a little tight going back down. Let's see. Nope, that's gonna go easily. Okay, good. All right, so this is basically it. Um, I wish I could be there with you <laughs> while you're doing your seat to tell you uh, to have patience with yourself and not not to panic. You know, if the cane breaks, you know, you just take it out or cut it or whatever you need to do and start another length. Um, and to just, you know, keep everything flexible by wetting it down or spraying it as is required as you're going around the seat. It's nice today um, because it's been raining here. So there's a lot of humidity in the air. If you're working, you know, someplace really hot and dry, I'm, I'm thinking of a few of y'all <laughs> where it's not rained much, um, then you're definitely going to be needing to spray this down frequently um, or even take this binder cane, coil it up and wrap a damp washcloth or something around it to keep it as, as wet as possible. But I'm going to just keep going with this. I will bring you back when I've come a little further around the chair so it's not a long, quote, boring video. See you in a little while. So this is the interior portion of the rattan plant, and it's used when um, I did the pressed seat. You probably remember this is the spline. So I'm going to create a little peg to hold the very first part of the binder into the seat. I'm just going to cut a little peg. This will be hidden inside the seat. You will see it. And not to just shape up so it's it's sort of um, sort of tapered. It's going to go down. Let me share it closer. It's going to go down into this hole right here and I'm going to tap it in but not quite yet. Before that happens I have just a few more holes to lace the final binding through. So go ahead and get that. Now you can see this end is, is plenty long. Now, if this were a square seat, that little peg that I just cut, four of those would be cut and one would be placed in each of the four corners of the chair where the four pieces of binder cane would be poked down into a little hole. If I can find a photograph that's close enough to show you the detail on that, I will, uh, I will put that into this video. And if not, I'm guessing there'll be There'll be another chair <laughs> in the near future coming along where I can show you a square seat. But for this moment, I'm trying to make this up through here. There we go. Again, this first loop is, is loose. It will be loose for um, just a few little while until we tie everything off underneath the chair, a little crow's nest, and get all tidied up. Again, it's, it's okay to have to shorten the, shorten the piece that's being woven through if it's not, uh, if it's got some sort of a edge on it, it's not wanting to pull through smoothly, it's okay to cut it. There we go. Hopefully you're seeing this. Put that in the center of the screen. Okay. And the next hole. There it is. Get it nice and tight. 
tight. This one will be tightened up in a minute. Again, always confirming that I have the slick side facing up. These seats do not require any sort of um, finish on them. The slick side of the cane material creates its own protection. There are times when I have replaced a seat within a set of chairs and because over time the the cane will get a, a darkening or a, a patina on it if you're in a situation where say you you've purchased a set of chairs and they're all relatively you know the, the seats are not damaged in any way and there's just one within the within the set that is not in good shape you can when you replace the seat for that one chair, you can go ahead and stain it um, to match the rest of the set. Just know that the staining will, it does change the material to a certain extent and it will shorten the lifespan of it. Not tremendously, but it, it does. The other thing to know about these chairs, this is a natural material. And so if the chair over, you know, the course of five, 10 years, whatever, if the bottom begins to sort of sag, you can once again, place a wet washcloth on it, let the cane soak up the moisture and then set it someplace uh, breezy, but not in, not in the sunlight and just allow it to dry. And because it is a natural material, as it dries, most often the seat will tighten itself up and it, it doesn't need to be replaced. It just needs, um, just needs to be tightened up. And wetting it, not soaking it, but wetting it, letting it absorb the moisture in and then going ahead and letting it dry uh, is usually enough to, to, um, to tighten the seat up. So just another, just another handy thing to know about caning, and I brought that up because if you do choose to stain a seat, then you're you're sealing the material and preventing preventing moisture from getting into it. So it will potentially not that won't be a a remedy if your seat were to start sagging. You might not be able to a wet towel on it and let it absorb moisture and then, um, you know, get it back into a, a flat state. So, almost there, almost there. Right. That. Now, uh -oh, I think in my flipping around, I have lost a little peg. Uh -huh. Yep, it fell out. Hold on. Okay, so we're ready for the final part. So I'm going to pull this loop down, and I've got the tiny little peg right here, which I'm going to push in this hole and I want it I want it to be holding but I don't want it to prevent the um, this from being able to be pulled down I'm gonna set you back up here on the top hold on okay so this long tag end has been pulled underneath that first loop I'm going to use my hammer and one of the pegs to just Tapping that in, and at the same time, I want to be pulling this so that they're going to go. They're going to go together, basically, because you can't push the peg down in so fast that it prevents the spline from being able to slide through. But at the same time, you don't want the peg to be sticking up. So, okay. All right. Now I can do a final tap on that, and that, 
And then this one will tighten up once, once we turn the chair over and do all the tightening. I'm going to clip this right there. And once this is tightened up, a small dab of glue could be placed on this if it, if it felt like it was gonna lift up for any reason, but usually that's not necessary. Okay, next step is to flip over and tie off the crow's nest. So let's get started on that. So to finish off the chair, you want to have uh, a spray bottle and spray down the crow's nest underneath the seat. So put some flexibility back into the uh, little tag ends that are holding out under here. And then you're just going to slide the cane material underneath the loops that are laying flat against the bottom of the chair, and you can use your awl to, again, create a little space to slide the material through. Um, let's see, it just went through and then it pulled itself back out. So, there. And then it's just a simple, simple knot. Back, pulling it tight. You can loop through the same one a couple of times. You can go in either direction. It doesn't really matter. You just want the knots to be flush with the bottom of the chair. And because these are, you know, tag ends that have been worked through the chair, you might have to clip the ends of them to make them uh, smooth and, and so that they will flow through and not get stuck underneath there. Just pulling it. Tying the knots. Now these uh, ends will all get clipped off as close to the bottom of the chair as possible. You may also find that you have some short, really short ends, like this one here is, well, it's about an inch. It would be very hard to tie that in a knot. What you can do with that is lay it flat um, against the bottom of the chair. I'll show you that in just a moment. So as you go over the, you'll go over it and, and pull the knot material over top of it. You're going to capture it flush with the bottom of the chair and then you can put it in close to the next one and then as you weave the next piece under to make a knot You can capture that loose short end again. And I'm going to bring you really close just so you can have a, a real tight in visual of what's happening under here. Um, all right. So I was just laying that piece in alongside these knots and then tied it, tying it down with this knot here and then this knot here so it's flush. Then all that needs to happen is you're going to take your clippers and snip these ends off as close to the chair seat as possible, bottom of the chair. You don't want any real long ends sticking out anywhere. So. All right, I'm going to keep going on this, and I'll show you what it looks like when I get to the uh, end of this part. Right, so there it is. That's the back side of the chair where we put the fancy knot. And let me carefully flip it over so you can see the little knots and everything on the bottom. All right, we're done.